Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm with Inspire Ministries and I'm so glad that you've given me just a few minutes of your time today. Today I want to share with you a common question that I get or a common comment that I get not only on my YouTube channel but also on the Kitchen Table page which is a community page that I run over on Facebook. If you're not part of that, the link is always found in the description box below every video that I do. You can join us over there. There are over 2,000 thousand of us over there learning scripture, growing in our faith, um, encouraging one another, spiritually speaking, every single day. And I would love for you to join us there. One of the posts that I made recently was from uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. And in that verse, it says this. It says, so get rid of all evil behavior, be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Now, one of the things that I talked about in there is that Peter is giving us this idea that it's not just about deceit, it's not just about hypocrisy, it's not just about jealousy, but it's about all unkind speech, which, which tends to be something that we tend to diminish or that we tend to discount in our life. Now, I recently did a video on this. I'll try to find it, link it down below. It is a very good video that you will want to watch if you want to kind of learn some things about how Peter talks to us about each of these areas. But for today's purposes, I want to talk to you about a comment that came in from one of our dear, lovely kitchen table friends. And she was talking about one of the examples that I gave about unkind speech. Now, the example that I gave was about how sometimes unkind speech can be how we speak about government leaders. Now, this was my comment in the post that I wrote. I said, um, those words that you've said about government leadership, even if they were true, could be harsh and cruel and most of all, unlike Christ. Now, her comment back to me was one of these comments that I feel like I get a lot. Uh, because we have a hard time, especially in the day and age that we are living in now as a nation, we have a hard time giving honor and giving respect and being grateful for leaders leaders in our in our world, right? And what she said in her comment really made me think about how many people, including myself, have wrestled with this same issue. So if you find yourself wrestling with this same issue, then I think you're going to find value in what I'm getting ready to say. What her comment was is she said, I don't speak too kind about politicians. I am guilty on this one. Now, my response back to her was in love. I was really trying to respond to her in love and tell her, listen, you're not alone. Many people fall in this same camp. We feel as though we can't be kind to those who are making decisions on our behalf that we do not align with. Making bad decisions from corrupt uh, minds and hearts that we can't align ourselves with politically. But I want to stretch the way that we think here for a minute. I want to stretch our minds and open up our hearts to see what the scriptures have to tell us on this matter. Because what I told her is that in recent years, I have studied more and more the importance of getting this right in the eyes of the Lord. And I went back to 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses one through three. Let me read them to you because they're very important words that we have to see. These are very important teachings from Paul to his son in the faith. And they're very, very important for us to get here sitting in the 21st century. Now, Paul says this, he says, I urge you, I love this first and foremost, right out of the gate. He's like, I urge you. In other words, I implore you. I beg you to get this one right. See to it that you understand the fullness of what I'm getting ready to say. He says, I urge you, first of all, like first of all, beyond before everything else, um, 
in, of more importance than anything else I'm getting ready to say, I want to urge you first and foremost, he says, to pray for all people. Boy, if we just put a period there and we ended there, it would be enough, right? Pray for all people. How many of us can say that we pray for all people? Listen, I know that I'm guilty in this. I have my list of who I pray for regularly. If you ask me to pray for you or your situation or your circumstance or your illness, of course, I'm going to pray for those things. But very seldom can I ever say that I pray for all people. Then he says, ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pause for a minute. He says, I urge you first and foremost to pray for all people, the people you like, the people you don't like, the people you get along with, the people you don't get along with, the people that you have faith and believe in and align your value system with, and the people that you don't. Pray for all people. Then he says, ask God to help them intercede on their behalf. What does that mean? It means it means put yourself in the middle of their circumstance so that you can plead with God on their behalf. It's almost like you're saying if they won't pray for themselves, if they won't see their need for a savior, I'll do it. I will pray for them. I will intercede. I will take the place. I will go between them and God. I will intercede on their behalf. I will see the needs they have based on what I know to be true about walking with the Lord. I will see the needs that they have and I will go to God and I will ask on their behalf the things that either they're not willing to pray for they don't have strength to pray for, or they simply won't pray for. So he says, ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them, period. Now let's look at the next verse. Verse two, pray this way. Okay, pray this way. What is this way? Pray for all people, ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority, yikes, so that, there's a conditional phrase, those are some key words we have to pay attention to in the scriptures because they give us clear indication of what's to come as a result of the prior thing that it was saying. So it says, if we pray for these kings and those in authority this way, we will do it so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. Wow. That is powerful. And in a season of life where we are getting ready quite soon here in the United States of America to embark upon another heated political season where we are going to be in the middle of a presidential race next year and we know that there are plenty of candidates that we don't like that we don't align ourselves with there might be ones in the running right now that are winning the race that we don't we don't enjoy we don't like them we don't want to hear from them we can't trust them. We don't believe anything they're saying. I get it. But I can't escape this verse and neither can you. 
And, and it's one of those verses that gets me every time I'm watching TV, every time I'm listening to the news, I think about this verse. And the implications of this verse frighten me. Let's read it again, just so that we're clear. I urge you, Paul says, first of all, to pray for all people, ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them, not to them, not ask God to get them to stop doing what they're doing, not to help you to look at things by considering that they might be loved by God and they might be being used by God. No, they, it says, pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede for them, and give thanks for them. Why? Because they've been placed there by God. We might not like it. We might not understand it. But it's very important that we be clear that it's our heart, it's our attitude, it's our holiness that God is after. And he says, pray this way, not a different way. Pray this way, the way that I just told you, the way that I just demonstrated, the one thing that I just urged you to do before everything else, this way, for kings and all those who are in authority. So that for the reason that we would live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. It's the reason we do this. The reason we behave this way is because we are humble, because we are gentle, because we are without reproach because we are, are gentle and mild and meek and faithful and loving and peaceful and joyful. And we have self-control. He says this, circle this, this is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and understand the truth. Paul understood this because as a persecutor of Christians turned greatest apostle the world has ever seen, he knew the other side. And so he wasn't just presenting truth to the Jews, but he was offering the Jews, or he was offering, he wasn't only just offering the truth to Jews who were the ones considered to be the chosen of God, but he was offering it to the Gentiles. He was saying he desires, God desires for everyone to be saved. Yes, even those political leaders that you do not like, even those political leaders that are against the very values that you claim to represent in your life and be for in your life and stand for in your life. Pray this way for all. I went on to tell my friend in this post, I said this, it's not enough to refrain from bad speech. Remember, 1 Peter 2, 1, be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. So it's not just enough for us to refrain from bad speech. We must take it a step further, as Jesus often does to us in the Sermon on the Mount. When he says, you've heard it said, but I say. Paul reminds us to not only refrain from bad speech, but to use our speech 
in a positive way, to pray for kings and to pray for those who are in authority, to ask God to help them, to intercede on their behalf because they might not have the wherewithal to pray for them themselves to intercede on their behalf. Have you ever thought about what a privilege and an honor it is to intercede on behalf of someone else? I have a friend right now whose son is in a coma from a bad car accident that he was in. And he is, he's not awake, he's not alert, and he cannot pray for himself. And so she is relying on us, the saints, the Christ followers, the Jesus people to intercede on behalf of her son who cannot intercede for himself, who cannot pray for himself. Pray for all kings this way. Pray for those who are in authority this way. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf. And this one, give thanks for them. And the reason we do this is not only to simply obey God and bring honor and glory to him through our sacrifice. But so that we can benefit from it as well. So that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked, marked by godliness and dignity. So that those who are in authoritative power, who don't know Christ, can be divinely impacted by the work of God's people here in the earth. Don't you want to be a part of that? Why would we want to be a part of speaking negatively and hatefully and angrily against people when the only thing that serves to benefit us is to make us depressed, filled with anxiety, have joylessness, be filled with unrest. It's the very opposite of peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Listen, the older I get, the more I realize what I want to live, how I want to live my life, the way that I want to live is I want to just live with peacefulness and quietness. I want to be comforted by knowing that my God is with me and if my God is with me, who can be against me? I want to live with holiness and godliness. I want to have dignity. I want to have peace. I want to have simple joys. I'm done living with anxiety and fear and sadness and being overcome by the sinfulness in the world. And it starts with you and it starts with me. Can we learn these great truths and apply them to our lives? It matters, friend. Oh, it matters. More than we will ever know, it matters. I love you, friend. I am praying for you because I know, again, I say this all of the time, but these truths are hard. I know it's not easy. I know there's going to be pushback to this particular video. I know that. But I'm willing to stand for truth. I'm willing to intercede on behalf of people who don't know what they need. To pray for people that they will be kind and good and faithful and that they will find the Lord and that they will make wise choices for our country. Listen, if you and I as the saints, you and I as the Jesus people are not interceding on behalf of those who can't or won't, we have no more hope left this side of eternity. I love you, friends. These are hard truths, but they're necessary. Get in your Bible. Read it for yourself. And let's apply the word of God to our life. 
I love you, friend. Have a great day.